Hey to YouTube, this is Jeff, aka 101 Bronson, back here again today with the next monthly update collection video of the month of May 2020. Uh, made a few pickups, not as much as last month. Last month was a bit crazy, but uh, did pick up some cool stuff, some cool movies, and uh, I would love to show you. And uh, so, by you know, with no further ado, let's just go ahead and dig in, shall we? And let's see what we picked up in May 2021. Enjoy. All right, so here we go with the uh, pickups. Uh, they're all Blu-rays. Uh, yes, they are. And, uh, you know, of course, I am 101 Bronson. I picked up a few Charles Bronson movies this month, so let's uh, you, uh, show you them first. So the German editions. First up, we have a media book for a very early Charles Bronson movie called Drumbeat, uh, which the Germans call uh, Der Einsame Adler, which means the lone eagle. Uh, but a uh, very early Charles Bronson movie. He's not even the lead in this one, but he has a big part. He is actually the main villain in this movie with Alan Ladd, this 50s Western. Uh, it's a media book, but it's only a DVD. Um, so not a Blu-ray. Okay, yeah, so I lied. This is a Blu-ray. This is a DVD, I mean. Uh, but anyway, very good movie, actually, this one. I actually enjoy Charles Bronson plays the main Native American Apache uh, villain in this uh, western. There he is right there. Hope the camera is picking it up. Focus. There we go. Uh, as you can see right there. It's a very, this is actually the first movie, fun fact for you, this is the first movie where Charles Bronson was credited as Charles Bronson. As you know, he, uh, some of you might know he changed his name. He's actually born as Charles uh, Baczynski, so this channel should have been 101 Baczynski, but uh, this is the first movie where he uses the moniker Bronson. So, uh, yeah, very good movie, and I'm glad to have it in the collection. Uh, the Germans really love Charles Bronson, and especially in media book form. Um, by the way, it has English audio and everything. Uh, everything I buy will, will have English audio, unless I say otherwise. But there you go, that's the movie Drumbeat. Um, good addition, what can I say? And uh, glad to have it in my Bronson collection, so. Next up, we have another media book from Germany. And this is from a, for a way different movie than the previous one. This is for a canon movie, Messenger of Death, with Charles Bronson from 1987. Now, even though it's a canon movie, and even though he has a gun undercover, this is actually more of a murder mystery Thriller. It's not a lot of uh, action in this movie, not a lot of badassery from Bronson, but it's a pretty decent uh, movie, this one. And it's the German media book right here from Koch Media or Koch Films. And this is a Blu ray and DVD media book, unlike the previous one. So let's quickly flip through a few pages. Yeah, there's just one or two fisticuffs, but not really a lot of, uh, don't expect a Death Wish free type movie. Even though this movie does, for one scene, reunite Bronson with uh, this actor right here, who I forget the name of. Um, but he was not he was the main villain in Ten to Midnight, which was another Canon Productions, Charles Bronson cop thriller. Um, Gene Davis, that was his name. Yeah, I forgot the name, but... Yeah, anyway, it's a, it's a pretty good Charles Bronson movie. It's, a, it's one, you know, from the very later half of his career. Uh, but, you know, for a Bronson fan like me, I like everything that the man has done, and this is certainly no exception. Um, Messenger of Death. Right there. All right, let's move over to more standard editions, and this is the last German edition I picked up of a Charles Bronson movie. And it's about time I picked this one up, Red Sun. I mean, look at this cast. You have Charles Bronson, Alain De Delon, I hope I pronounced it right, Ursula Andres, Honey Ryder from Dr. No herself, and Toshiro Mifun. This is a great cast, and it's directed by Bond, uh, James Bond veteran uh, Terence Young, uh, who also directed Bronson, of course, in Veloci Papers and also in uh, Cold Sweat. 
and uh, yeah very good uh, western this one and it's like uh, east meets west type of western pretty funny as well uh, some good comedic moments and good action scenes it's a very good movie in my opinion and i'm very glad to I finally added this one to the Bronson collection. I've seen it many years ago, but I just never owned it. So, very glad to have it. Red Sun. Uh, we're not done with Charles Bronson yet. Uh, we did pick up the Spanish uh, Blu-ray of Def Hunt and finally added this movie to the collection. Um, yeah, what can I say? This is one of Charles Bronson's best movies, in my opinion. And this pairs him up with Lee Marvin again. Um, after they, after they did the Dirty Dozen together in the 60s, this one from the early 80s teamed them back up. Um, also with Carl Weathers, Apollo Creed in this one, um, directed by Peter Hunt, who directed my favorite James Bond movie, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Um, you also have Angie Dickinson and Andrew Stevens in this one. Again, another actor who teamed up with Bronson again in uh, Ten to Midnight. Also Ed Lauder, of course, from Death Wish Free and... Uh, a few other Bronson movies he did with it with him. Very good movie. And uh, German Blu-ray and US Blu-ray are impossible to get, so I got this uh, Spanish edition. Which, uh, yeah, it might not be an official release, but f I, I, nonetheless, I do finally have this movie in the collection. So, for me, it's, uh, it's good enough. So, there you go. And the final Charles Bronson edition, I went to Amazon France for this one. And my buddies... Donnie, Cinemaniac 77 and Carlos Eastwood for Life and also picked up this movie and I couldn't be the one uh, missing out. It's uh, You Can't Win Them All with uh, Charles Bronson, Tony Curtis and Michelle Mercier. Mercier. Uh, she was in the Spaghetti Western Cemetery Without Crosses, which I liked her in that one and I liked her in this as well. And uh, actually pretty good uh, Charles Bronson movie. I never saw seen this one before. I never saw this one before, uh, I'm ashamed to say, but uh, Carlos said, you know, if you if you got to be one-on-one Bronson, you have to watch everything the man has done, and uh, you certainly have to pick up on this release, and yes, I couldn't, uh, yeah, I couldn't let that slide, so I just had to, <laughs> I had to pick this uh, edition up, so, a uh, very, very good movie, actually, I actually liked it, I'd probably give it about a three, three and a half out of five stars, if I were to rate it, something like that, which I'm terrible at rating movies, but that's probably what I, what I would give it. But yeah, you can't win them all. Moving on from one action tough guy to the next, we have Chuck Norris. We picked up a few Chuck Norris uh, movies on Blu-ray from Germany. We have Firewalker with Chuck Norris and Lou Gus Jr., which is like an Indiana Jones type of rip-off movie with Chuck Norris. Uh, this is, uh, of course when Chuck Norris was making movies with the Canon Group. So this is produced by Menachem Golem and Joram Globus. And directed by J. Lee Thompson, actually, who directed uh, the majority of Bronson's uh, Canon movies. So, um, yeah, it wasn't too big on this movie, but, you know, it, it, it was okay. It was okay, in my opinion, Firewalker. It's something different for Chuck Norris. He was trying to sort of lose his tough guy image with this movie. He's just sort of making a Mickey out of himself. But uh, it is what it is. I, I didn't mind the movie that much. It was okay. So, Firewalker from 1986, I want to say. But, uh, yeah. There you go. Another Chuck Norris movie added to the collection. And the next three Chuck Norris movies are upgrades. I previously had these on DVD. And first up, we have a classic, Invasion USA. One of my favorites, if not my favorite movies that uh, Chuck Norris did with the Canon Group. I love Invasion USA. With uh, the main baddie who was, um, oh, I forget his name as well. Um, uh, shit, I forget his name. Uh, Richard Lynch, that's the one. Richard Lynch as uh, Nico, no, not Nico, he was Rostov, you know, it's time to die, I love this movie, great action movie, great action scenes, and the finale is amazing, I love it, uh, Invasion USA, what can I say, this is canon at their best, in my opinion, you know, when they're, when they're doing these big action movies, you know, for them big anyway, it was still pretty low budget, but yeah, I love the canon movies anyway, so, and another essential uh, Chuck Norris canon movie, 
Missing in Action is also the German edition, this one, from NSM Records. Um, yeah, this is sort of a copycat of Rambo First Blood Part 2. Even though they were released around the same time, I do believe that they actually insiders got, got the scoop on the script of Rambo First Blood Part 2 and they sort of, you know, copied it. But <clears throat> nonetheless, it's still a pretty good action movie. You know, Chuck Norris plays a soldier going into Vietnam, rescuing POWs. Yeah, it is very First Blood Part 2 esque, but uh, I like First Blood Part 2, so that's not a bad thing, you know. I love that uh, premise of going in and saving American POWs. So, uh, pretty good movie. And uh, yeah, what can I say? It's a Chuck Norris canon movie and probably one of the biggest budgets that they spent on one of the on the movies that they did. So very good one. And of course we have the sequel, or should we say prequel, Missing in Action 2, the beginning. Um, strangely enough, I actually really like this one. Not, not a lot of people, this is sort of underrated. Not a lot of people like this one, I believe, but I like this one, Missing in Action 2 where it's Chuck Norris himself who's in the POW camp and he has to escape. Uh, it takes place before the first movie. Actually, they shot this before the first movie. They shot them simultaneously. They shot them simultaneously and they decided that the other one had more action so they released that as Missing in Action 1 and they released this as the second one even though this is actually... This should... You should watch this before Missing in Action 1 but... Um, yeah, actually, I, I really like this movie. I love the villain. This one played by... As you credited here, oh yeah, Sun Tech O, who was in the Bond movie, The Man with the Golden Gun. He plays the main villain here, I love him. He really gets into his part, and he's a very enjoyable uh, bad guy that you love to hate, so. I, I like this movie, no problems with this one. All right, let's move on. And last European uh, region pickup, um, we picked up another edition uh, that a. Uh, <coughs> We picked up another edition that my good buddy Carlos also picked up. The Halloween 8 film collection by Midnight Classics. Now, I would love to go in depth about this one, but uh, my good buddy Carlos has already done a very good in depth uh, video about this. I will leave the link below, check that out instead, because he has done a great video unboxing this uh, beautiful uh, set here of the Halloween movies of the first eight. Uh, so this has pretty much everything besides the Rob Zombie remakes and the 2018 Halloween. So, uh, But yeah, very good addition. Very glad to have this one. And uh, yeah, I can finally enjoy pretty much all the Halloween movies in HD. Now I had a few on Blu-ray, but now I have them all on Blu-ray. So yeah. So please check out that video that my good buddy Carlos Eastwood for Life fan did on that edition. Now we have some uh, UK pickups and we picked up three 88 films uh, editions of Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. And here we have the first one is Double Team with Van Damme and Dennis Rodman. Uh, of course, this is the 88 films first pressing edition with the slipcover. Um, and this also contains a booklet and a uh, A3 size full up poster, as it says right there. Limited edition of 3,000 copies. I picked up uh, this number right here. Um, it's not the best Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, but it's a pretty good one. It has Mickey Rourke as the main villain. Uh, and I actually think he did a great job in the movie as a villain. Uh, not not a fan of Darren Rodman though. That's probably the main drawback in this movie. The main negative is Darren Rodman. I'm just not a fan of the guy uh, in this movie. You know, maybe as a basketball player he is good. I don't know, I don't watch basketball, but he's a terrible actor in this movie in my opinion. And uh, yeah, anyway, Double Team. A decent uh, average Van Damme movie. Uh, wouldn't make the top 10. I'm, obviously I did my top 10 Van Damme movies and this one wasn't in it. We do have Double Impact in the, the top 10, but that is not to be confused with this movie, so. And next up we have Jean-Claude Van Damme's first straight-to-DVD movie, if I'm not mistaken, um, Legionnaire. And uh, 88 Films, they actually labeled them on the spine. This is from 1998. Uh, again, like I said, with the uh, very glossy, I love it actually, very glossy uh, slipcover. Uh, booklet and poster included as well. 
limited to 3,000 copies again. This one I think isn't selling that much because I picked up a very low number, but uh, yeah, actually a very underrated Jean-Claude Van Damme movie in my opinion. This one made the honorable mention uh, section in my top 10 Van Damme movies. I really like this one. It's more of a drama, it's more of a slower paced Van Damme movie, it's not a lot of fisticuffs and action, but there is still action in it, and the action in here is very good. This is actually directed by Peter McDonald. And if that name sounds familiar, it should, because this man directed Rambo 3, you know, the mo probably the most action-packed Rambo movie of the 80s. Uh, very close to the second one, I think, but enough about Rambo. This is a very good movie. It also has Steven Burkov in here, the ultimate 80s villain, Octopussy, Beverly Hills Cop, Rambo First Blood Part II, like I said. Um, yeah, <clears throat> what can I say? It's a very underrated Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, and I do recommend people to check it out. So, yeah, that's me. Next up, we have another 88 films uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, like I said. It's a, another straight-to-DVD movie, Replicant, from 2001. Again, slipcover. This is kind of, yeah, different uh, cover on the... Uh, Actual MRA poster and booklet again included. Uh, limited to 3,000 copies once again. And uh, yeah, another underrated Van Damme movies. I do believe this one also made my honorable mentions uh, list when I did my top 10 JCVD movies. Um, Jean Claude Van Damme, Michael Rooker. Michael Rooker is sort of the lead in this movie, actually. Actually, his character is the main character, Van Damme, actually. Uh, well, actually, uh, I'd say they're cool, Bill, but I think Michael Rooker has more to do in this movie, actually, than Van Damme, even though Van Damme has two parts in this movie. He plays uh, dual parts, but, uh, yeah. Another underrated one, this one. If you guys want to read what it's about, feel free to pause. Um, so, yeah, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Replicant. And that's it for the JCVD movies, where we do have a few more 88 films uh, pickups first up we have a movie with sean connery cuba now uh, this is also released by 88 films right there and this is from 1979 and this is actually a movie if you guys remember when i did my jean uh my jean claude yeah my sean connery uh dvd collection back uh last year I mentioned I had this movie on DVD, but the DVD was faulty and I could only play the first 30 minutes of it. So I never seen this movie fully. I still haven't watched it yet on this edition, but now I finally have the Blu-ray. I can finally get rid of that faulty DVD that I, that I once owned because uh, yeah, I only watched the first 30 minutes of this movie. And uh, from those first 30 minutes, I actually did not mind this movie. Uh, it's not one of Sean Connery's best known movies, but uh, you know, I just I want I want to own as much, yeah, but I want to own as much of the man's movies as I can. So, and this one I did own, and I could just couldn't watch it, so that was a shame. But uh, yeah, slipcase, uh, slipcover, and we have uh, a different cover art on the MRA, which is actually pretty cool. It's like poster art, so. So I can't comment on the movie itself, the first 30 minutes only, but uh, yeah, Sean Connery and Cuba. I wonder what Sean Connery is doing in Cuba though. Is she a winner? Because Shani gets to go home and fuck the prom queen. Yeah, sorry for the terrible Sean Connery impression, guys. <laughs> and we have one more 88 films uh, pickup, and this is a Euro crime movie, The Cynic, The Rat and The Fist. With Maurizio Merrily, John Saxon, and Tomas Millian. And I haven't watched it yet. I haven't got around to uh, watching it. I haven't got the chance to watch this one. But I'm very much looking forward to it because this is uh, a sequel, at least they say here, to Rome Armed to the Thief. But I'm going to take that very loosely because uh, mm -hmm. Italians and sequels, they, 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 just, uh, they just try to make any, anything a sequel in, in Italy back then with Euro crimes. Um, you know, they were very loosely, they just took the name of some characters and they called it the sequel, so. But, uh, yeah, very much looking forward to this movie, watching it. Um, 
and I'm very much looking forward to seeing the upcoming 88 films release of some other Euro crime movies which will include Rome Armed to the Thief and also another movie with uh, Maurizio Maroli, I forgot the title. Uh, no, it wasn't with him, it was uh, with Luke Miranda, The Violent Professionals, that's the one. <clears throat> Those are some upcoming 88 films releases, I'm very much looking forward to them. So, but anyway, for now this is The Cynic, The Rat and the Fist, which is a very good parody of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it could be. <laughs> and we have one more UK uh, purchase, and this is an Arrow video, this is a new Arrow video release. Switchblade Sisters by Jack Hill. Now, I watched the trailer for this movie, it looked very interesting, very up my alley, and uh, I like Jack Hale's movies, you know, he directed Coffee, Foxy Brown, uh, The Big Bird Cage, or one of, one of those movies, The Big Dollhouse and The Big Bird Cage, I always get them confused, but Black Spectation movies with Pam Greer and Women in Prison movies, he, di he directed a bunch, and this is about a female gang uh, from the trailer, from what I could make, it, it's a, it looks like a very good movie, I haven't watched it yet. This is a new Arrow video release. I actually still haven't got a chance to watch this one as well. I haven't even got the chance to flip to the uh, original artwork, which I usually do first thing, but there it is right there. Um, and I haven't even got a chance to open up the booklet. So yeah, it's been a very busy month, uh, work related and everything. It's been very busy, so I haven't got the chance to watch everything in my uh, that I picked up so but this one it looks like a very fun and cheesy uh, movie you know very ex uh, exploitation I ask I think right I think this is gonna be like an exploitation movie I think there's gonna be a lot of nudity and a lot of uh, gory action in this one so let's quickly flip to this uh, booklet looks very much like uh, um, Daryl Hannah in uh, Kill Bill with the with the eye patch. Uh, maybe Tarantino took some influence from this one. I should actually show you guys better. So yeah, like that. Is that Nick Nolte? <laughs> sort of look like him, but I I doubt that's him. Opening this booklet is not going to contain spoils because I haven't seen the movie yet. Oh yeah, there we go. Anyway, yeah, Switchblade Sisters, new Arrow video release. I'm actually really looking forward, again, you know, just like with the other ones I haven't watched yet, to uh, watching this one. And, um, yeah, Switchblade Sisters. And the final pickup is actually from Down Under. This is a Australian release by Umbrella Entertainment of two documentaries. I uh, picked it up mainly for this one here, Electric Boogaloo, The Wild Untold Story of Canon Films, which this is a fantastic documentary in my opinion. And then you also have another one that comes with it, Machete, Machete Maidens Unleashed, which is about uh, movies that were shot in the Philippines, these action movies in the Philippines like Black Mama, White Mamba, stuff like that. Uh, hey, another Bronson picture right there. Um, but yeah, I mainly picked it up, like I said, for this one, the story of the of Canon Films, you know, probably my favorite production company because they made so many great 80s action, you know, cheesy movies, um, Cobra, Over the Top, Death Wish, uh, Invasion USA, like I said, you know, very good one. American Ninja, stuff like that. Uh, and Machete Mains, it was also a very good documentary, I must say, I actually watched it, I watched these two. Um, very good documentaries, but obviously this is great. And there's going to be another Canon documentary that's going to be released on Blu-ray in the UK pretty soon, which uh, is that one called The Go-Go Boys? Mm. Something like that, I would definitely pick that one up as well. But uh, yeah, there's Umbrella Editions, there's Umbrella Edition of, the, of this one. It's uh, region free, as you guys can see right there, and it has uh, 5.1, 2.0 audio. It actually has a ton of special features, which I haven't checked out the special features yet, but yeah. Very good uh, documentaries, these two, so very glad to have it. And that's it. Those are all the pickups for the... 
So there you have it. Those were the pickups from May of 2021. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, stay safe and healthy. And uh, as always, let me know in down in the comments how you feel about some of these movies. Uh, um, love to chat with you guys about some of these movies, as, as I always do. And uh, that having been said, hope you guys enjoy once again. Stay safe and healthy. Keep punching. And we'll see you in the next one. So long for now. Oh, <laughs>